Hello and welcome back to coverage of the PDGA Euro Tour. We are at the first stop, the Pro Forester Tournament at Lagoda Disc Golf Course in Varaždin, Croatia. We are bringing you Round 1 Back 9 FBO feature card coverage brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood and with me once again, Elias Lukonen. Hello disc golfers, I'm excited to see what happens on this difficult wooded Back 9. Yeah, the gaps are tight, the course is demanding, conditions are not at their best, it's a little bit humid, a little bit rainy, but we'll see these competitors battle through the situations. As we saw a quick look at the standings there, Katka Bodova leading the field currently through the front nine holes. We'll see if she can maintain that pace here on the back nine. We start here on hole 10. Par 4, 188 meters. Players will have this large guardian tree right in front of the tree right in front of the tee to contend with. They will blast one into this open field where they then have a few islands of hazard to contend with on the right in the bottom right of frame as well as to the left if their approach comes up a little bit short. I think for the majority of right-handed players an Anheuser backhand off the tee and a Heiser approach to the green. Yeah, this hole is uh, really off the drive. It's mostly about distance. You're trying to get uh, at as much distance as you're as uh, you possibly can, while still hopefully staying on the fairway. Um, looks like uh, Nicola is going for the left side. Um, that seems to be in trouble for the OB, and it actually does cross over over to the left side OB, unfortunately. But Katka with a very good looking shot down the left side as well, just on the edge of the tall grass. Yeah, about five meters over the left of that hillside, you do find OB fairly quickly. You want to keep it in the fairway. You can land on top of the hill, although it may not be advised, it is still safe. You only find trouble if you go over on the other side. Laura with a good looking drive, center fairway. Yeah, that was a, a good shot. Um, possibly a chance for birdie, but at least a very good chance for par. And Andrea. Similar shot, although fading to the hillside, that is going to be difficult footing, but uh, otherwise a pretty okay spot. You can see Nicola here laying up before the hazard area to avoid the extra stroke, and um, she's going to have a shot at the basket from there. Andrea now looking to shape the backhand hyzer, a little bit pinched with that last guardian tree before the green, she hits the branches and falls short of the hazard area as well. She will have a short third approach there, third shot to secure her par. And Katka going aggressive through the trees and hopefully not skipping to the hazard. Looks like she's safe there. The hazard certainly comes into play if you're going through the trees. But as we can see, Laura going around the hazard. Um, that's a smart play to avoid the extra stroke and stay safe. Looks like she's gonna have a short approach for the par there. Nicola with the awkward stance with the trees. He's the, he's the guardian tree there, but um, fortunately falls safe. Andrea now looking to shape an a hyzer underneath the branches and she does, it flips up to flat and carries long as she finds a short skip on that path, she will be looking back towards the basket now. Probably edge of circle two will be a tricky one, but still possible. Nicola there, leaving it a bit short, going with a really steep hyzer with a slow disc. And Katka with a great oh. control on the approach, almost running it for a bit. The grass on this course is very lush, and uh, usually with a slow disc you don't get much of a skip. As you can see, Laura also running it aggressively and uh, staying inside the bullseye there. This is Andrea coming back now from downtown. She sends it long and she brings it back for par. Incredible save, good composure. That's how you do it. Yeah, that was an incredible putt. You could really see the loft they had to put on the, on the disc. Unfortunately, Nicola missing from inside the circle. That said loft. Not quite finding it there for Nicola. 
Katka with a short putt for par. Kind of a pa- power player, Katka. She has some great distance off the tee, solid approaches, a confident attacking game. She goes for everything. Yeah, it's really great to see her really playing with uh, playing with good uh, good effort, putting everything he she has to uh, to the, every shot. Absolutely, and I'm sure she'll carry that into here, hole 11. Par 3, 87 meters, you have a very tight gap off the tee. You need a straight shot that has a soft finish to the left. Although not required to finish left, a lot of players will lean on an understable disc with a hyzer release through the gap, standing it up to flat and trying to land soft. Yeah, on this hole, you can see the first tree on the left is really tempting because that's kind of on the line where you would ideally like to throw the disc. Gotka obviously with the left hand going with more of a turnover shot. Fades out just a bit, but she's in within putting distance from circle two. And she's a strong putter. Wouldn't be too surprised if she made it from there. And Laura with a perfect looking shot there. Insane shot. Just got the perfect amount of flip up with the uh, with low delivery. Was able to penetrate through the fairway. But still, she maintained it on that one angle shot the whole way. Really impressive. We saw Andrea there find some of that trouble on the left side through an early release. She will be scrambling, but still had enough distance, I believe, to salvage par. Nicola, on the other hand, holds on to it a little bit long out that right side rough, also crashes through. She'll have a circle to look for birdie. Yeah, that could have gone very much more wrong, but a uh, lucky break there to be potting for birdie instead of... Uh struggling to get the par. Let's see if she can give it a good run. Yeah, from circle two, that's an incredible putt. We're really seeing some highlights here These, on the putting green. Yeah, they're on their game, they're well put together, they're finding the drives and the putts. We saw Andrea there go for a highlight of her own, catch just off the right side. And let's see Katka here. Oh, kind of a hyzer release there, unfortunately unable to cash it in from circle two. But par is just fine. It's uh, it's one hole that you would like to birdie. It's not uh, on the more, more difficult side, but it's certainly tight and you have to hit your angle to get the birdie. Yeah, I think definitely a hole where you want to throw smooth and not hard, needing to hit that shape precisely. We saw Laura do that and secure the birdie putt. Very solid two to find. One highlight putt, one short putt, both birdies. Two out of four, very nice. As we move on to hole 12. Par three, 106 meters. You have these two initial gaps to hit. Once you do so, you break into this open field. You have no real OB to speak of, but very thick rough on the right side and the fairway of 13 on the left side that you do not want to end up in. A very specific shape through this initial gap, I think, once again, leaning on some understability to ensure a long straight flight. Very true. and. Uh... As usual on this course, off the tee, there's a low ceiling that you can see right there on the gap. And um, Lara hits the gap very well, turns over just slightly, but stays on the fairway. She'll have a good shot to get the par. Nicola with a higher shot, but with an extremely understable disc, able to turn even with the height and the steep hyzer angle. That was a good shot there. Katka looking to shape a flex here. She gets this turning into Anheuser. This will find the full fade at the end. Moving towards the basket the whole way. She'll be in circle two looking for her putt. A little bit short, but a really nice shape. That was a really nice shot. And uh, Andrea almost also gets a shot really well through the gap. And with a perfect angle, they'll all have a short approach slash even a run at the, at the birdie. Laura with the touchy forehand there with a slow disc she's very solid on those upshots i think reliable on the forehand and backhand approaches katka with a deep bid sits it down nice and soft that was a great one and nicola almost drains it from deep circle too that was a great one as well let's see andrea a decent run as well just settles inside the bullseye it's a it's a very commonly parred hole. It's a pretty long hole to get into circle one, but um, par is not too difficult to take on this one. So I'm sure all of these players are quite content with the par. I think the only real 
problematic part of the hole to find yourself over par would be missing that initial gap. Once you break out of there, it's quite friendly with the open green flat ground. As we see the par frame coming in here on hole 12. Yeah, very true. And again, the lush grass that's uh, common on this course, not really allowing for many skips or rollaways on the green. Here you see the daunting hole 13. This par five sits at 195 meters. As you can throw left or inside as the drone flies of the initial tree, you then find this hillside, while looking small, can really be a significant obstacle to finding distance on your first or second shot. Once you crest over that, you have the second leg of the fairway, battling about 80 meters to this fallen tree. The basket is then tucked away on the hill up to the right. Extremely difficult to get a lot of distance on any given shot here. Feels like you just have to chip away at the fairway, keep it in the middle and work your way up there. Yeah, very true. And uh, off the first shot, it's just really important to stay in the fairway and get as close to that ridge as pos possible. Laura unfortunately hitting the first bushy tree on the left. Even on this hole, even though the gap looks pretty wide, um, again, as, uh, as before, it's a bit of a low ceiling. But um, Nicola gets a good shot there, off to the left. And Kotka actually going with the alternate left-hand hyzer route. And that's a very smart play, utilizing the left left hand throw. And it's the bigger of the two gaps, to be fair. From this angle, the one on the inside looks bigger, but there's a lot of space between the two trees to go on that outside route. As we see another slightly inside shot from Andrea, we will have a few scrambles. These second shots are going to want to ideally get over the hill, but even if you're on the short side at the base, you can still manage to get over and find some distance. But you do want to push it as hard as you can on this second shot, hopefully getting over. Yeah, the second shot is, um, or whatever shot you're trying to throw over the hill is difficult in the sense that the hill acts like a high floor, but the leaves of the trees act like a low ceiling. So it's a very specific height that you have to throw. And um, Andrea there throwing a good looking shot, but just barely hits the one tree in the middle of the gap. See Laura now looking for that chopping flex forehand. I think plays really nicely to get over the hill, but maintain a nose down integrity to the flight. Nicola now also contending with that low ceiling. As you mentioned, you're forced to throw nose up over the mound, but then very quickly you find some thick trees. Yeah, and Andrea, they're going for the common approach on this hole to the green, which is a forehand with a, with a driver of sorts. Ideally, if you want to get close to the basket with approach, you want to throw something pretty fast with a good overstable finish. Just actually perfectly demonstrated there. That was a beautiful shot by Nicola. Laura now shaping a flex through the gap. And that last tree is really just the gatekeeper to the green. So many people connecting on that. Just another piece of the puzzle that you need to put together in order to attack this tricky hole. Katka, though, shaping this beautifully, crashes the green. A little bit of an unfortunate roll that will pinch off her putting angle, but still a great shot regardless. Yeah, that was a good approach. And another one of the good approaches here by Andrea, unfortunately hitting a tree next to the basket and kicking a bit further away. Um, you can see on this green, there's a great backstop for running putts or even longer approaches. For example, Kotka can, uh, can run this putt with uh, zero fear. And unfortunately just missing, but uh, stays right next to the basket. And it's surprisingly uphill from um, where Andrea is putting there. You can see the putt coming out a bit low. Um, pretty common for those steep uphill putts. Nicola makes sure to put it in for her par, and that can often feel like a birdie here on hole 13. Par is a great score, I think, averaging over par. As we see Laura also with her short putt, she will be finding bogey closer to the average score. Yeah, actually, average score on this hole was 5.56, so over a half stroke over par. So taking a six on this hole, while it might feel a little bit bad, it's really not that bad compared to the average of the field.
on the horizon. Dawn is breaking, a brand new day. The best kept secrets of the Croatian Adriatic are waiting to be discovered. Make sure to check out Val Tours if you're looking to visit Croatia. Hole 14, par 4, 158 meters, while demanding one of the more attackable par 4s in the woods. You have a straight to leftwards fading shot off the tee. Good shots will land right about here, dissecting this hole in half, where you then have a long tunnel shot with low ceiling and some tight woods. Basket once again tucked away, heavily guarded green, you want two straight shots effectively to try and cut this in half, go 80, 80, and look for your birdie. Yeah, very true. And even though the tee shot might look like a hyzer, as you said, you really want to go with a straight shot, straight shot that finishes only a bit to the left. Nicola here going with the, with the inside route of inside flip up and she's on in the middle of the fairway. That's a good play. Going to have a good chance for the birdie. Katka needing to shape a turnover with her left-handed throw, and she does so nicely. We'll settle a little bit shorter than I think she's aiming, but a very well-positioned shot. Yeah, and Laura going also a bit of an inside route, um, just barely staying on the fairway, though, and that's another chance for birdie, although it's quite a ways out, and a little bit left side of the fairway means that the approach is going to be more of a hyzer-shaped shot. I Andrea. would say you want to be on the right side of the fairway, opening it up for sure, but left side is still manageable. Yeah, I would say anything on the fairway is fine, but obviously right is a bit better. As we can see here, there's this one um, one cluster of trees on the left side of the fairway. That's limiting the shot options if you're short left. Katka there hit some trees a little bit short, but going to have a good chance for the par. Laura there, as you can see, really having to contend with the cluster of trees on the left side. Having to go with that tight, low hyzer and unfortunately a little bit short of the basket. We see Andrea playing the width a little bit more. She also connects with some branches on her way. Will come up a bit short, likely an edge of circle to look to the basket. Nicola now. She gets this flipping up to flat beautifully down the tunnel. As she fades just inside of those last trees, she is inside the circle, putting for birdie. Really great result. Nice shot. That was a really well-shaped shot, and you can see the height control was uh, crucial there. She kept it well above the ground, but still, um, still not too high to hit the ceiling, and that was a great approach there from Andrea. Really good touch. Katka with the awkward patent pending stance, Anheuser backhand slides one up also into the circle, just testing our cameraman's reflexes. Right. Katka seems like she's actually quite comfortable with the patent pending. I feel like we've seen a lot of those from her, and they've been uh, quite good all the time. And this course tends to create a lot of them relative to the average course, a lot of very thick rough requiring you to pitch out. The pattern pending as we see Nicola from Circle's Edge drop in that birdie. Very nice. Her second birdie here on the back nine. That's great. She's really feeling the putter right now. Katka takes the par from five meters. Good to get those short ones in, especially for the par. And Laura finding the only obstacle inside of five meters. No issue for her though. Making sure to put in that putt. As we see Andrea approaching for a short tap in, she'll be dropping that in for bogey. It's a tricky hole, I think, as the, the card averaged a par result. Totally fine result there. It is for sure. It's, uh, it's not a gimme, that's for sure. And neither is hole 15. 
It may only be a 134 meter par 4, but a very tight tunnel off the tee you need to fade before these small trees here into the opening of the second half of the fairway. Once you land there, you still have a series of tight gaps and big trees that you need to weave around, through, over, under. Once you make your way up to this green, you have it heavily guarded once again with branches on all sides, left, right, and long. You'd rather be about eight short than five long because you can be left without a putt from very well within the circle. Yeah, on this hole, being on the fairway is crucial, no matter the distance. You can really throw a kind of a shorter shot off the tee and still be in great position. And that's a really good shot from Nicola. Pushing the left side, but just barely getting around the corner. She's in the middle of the fairway. That's an ideal spot. Katka pushing that Anheuser flex. She will actually have a sort of backdoor entrance to the second half of the fairway going right of those small trees. It does open up a little bit, although it's a harder line to find. Laura with a late release will find the quick early side rough, I think. Best case scenario for her par now, as that is really tricky. If you don't beat this tunnel on the first, it's incredibly difficult to progress up the fairway. Yeah, and Andrea with a opposite mistake going early left. And you can just see how tough the rough is on this course. And that's really not uncommon to see on this hole to somebody hit some of the first trees and be completely blocked off for, from even playing for the par. Laura with a good good position shot there, but uh, still long ways to the basket from there. Although um, after the initial tunnel, the fairway does give you some more options uh, towards the end of the fairway. Yeah, I'd say anywhere outside the first tunnel, middle, left or right of the fairway offers you a different gap to take as you try and approach the green. Katka going for a big hyzer flip up catches an inside tree, significantly reducing the distance on her flight and likely contending with the rough. This hole can make or break a great round and really tests your, your nerves coming into these final holes. Yeah, this hole is uh, purely mental as we see Nicola going with the high forehand. Forehand is the play for the green. Because uh, you have a low ceiling and you want to finish right. But the low ceiling part gets uh, many players on this hole. It's When I say low ceiling, it's truly a very low ceiling. You maybe have only two or two and a half meters of ceiling to work with. Andrea, though, has broken out near the back side of this tricky second tunnel. As she shapes her forehand approach, she fades a little bit early, but just a few meters away from the basket. Very manageable putt and a smooth shot to not connect with anything. Yeah, that was a nice little touch forehand with a slow disc there. Laura trying to do the same, unfortunately hitting one of the trees in the middle. There's many trees to hit on this hole, even at the at the end of the fairway. And Kotka with the great, again, and very awkward stance, but makes it work. Great core strength and composure, good control of the body from those awkward stances. Nicola here. Little skip off the top of the hill, sits it down nicely at the base of that big tree. That will be effectively a tap in for her, nicely done. Laura, we hope to see her put this one close after some struggles getting out the first tunnel. As this bleeds right, she's just on the edge of that rough by the green. I think still an unobstructed putt though, fortunately. Yeah, it's uh, right side is all right, unless you're more than, let's say, seven meters away. As you can see, they have a uh, Fairly open pots as Andrea makes it from six and a half meters. Katska looking to do the same from a bit closer, and she does. It's really nice to see all of these players utilizing different skills in their game. Really, all of them are very well rounded, being able to throw these touch forehand shots as well as mm, opposite side with the backhand. And Laura, unfortunately, there takes a big number, the seven. But it's certainly a difficult hole. It's actually the second most difficult hole on the course. So even though it's a short hole, there is so much trouble to be found on this one. With two tunnels to beat, danger comes quick. They will move on to hole 16. Par 388 meters, 
They have this initial tunnel to contend with and one singular gap which is paramount to hit. Shaping between these two large trees, you need your disc to go on a hyzer angle and begin to stall or fade. You can even play the skip, although it's a little bit wet here this weekend. Once you get through the gap, you want your disc to cut left, work its way towards the basket. This one really rewards a solid hyzer to flip up shape that stays on one angle the whole way. Yeah, the gap on this hole is surprisingly far away. It's actually like 50 meters from the tee pad. And the gap isn't too big. Even though the initial gap looks pretty big, uh, the gap after the initial gap, which um, uh, which Nicola unfortunately just pushed straight off, is actually very small. So the angle that you have to throw the disc is very specific because you have to move so far left in uh, such a specific time. And Katka obviously with the left hand backhand kind of impossible to get to the basket, but Throws a good straight shot through the gap. See Andrea shaping that one beautifully. Gets the fade before that late tree line just outside Bullseye. Fantastic shot for her. She'll be looking to collect her first birdie of the back nine. Laura now with a slightly early release will contend with some thick, thick rough. And it's worth mentioning holes 13 through 16 have a significant amount of mosquitoes at this time of year. And the moment you enter on the rough, into the rough off the fairway, you are swarmed by them. So it's also testing your mental composure and focus. That's a great point then. Especially, let's see if Laura, wow, almost makes it from pretty much circle, circle three. three. <laughs> yeah, but about the mosquitoes, especially after having a couple of tough holes in the woods, I can tell you that they really beat you. It's just that extra added element. Not only are you battling your co the course layout and yourself, but some extra critters there to keep you keep you focused. As we see Nicola fired just off the right side chains, she'll be left with about seven meters on her way back. That was a confident stroke, though. Really um, strong putt from circle two, just barely missing to the right. And Laura with a good clean up there from five meters. Nicola has some work left. She watches that. Not so content, I think, with how that went in, but it sticks. Did it, though? I see another disc on the ground. Oh. It must have fallen out. As it came out, yeah, her body language there suggesting she was unhappy with the result. Yeah. Well, as Andrea takes a great birdie, it's a... This is a great hole to get because it's such a specific line to hit, but yeah, that's a really unfortunate break for Nicola. Looked like a pretty decent putt to me. Every single stroke counts as the numbers dwindle down. We are locked down to the last two final holes here of the Pro Forester layout. You see here hole 17, an 82 meter par three pure tunnel shot the entire way. Shaping really nicely, this basket is framed in perfect view from the tee. It may look easy, but anything that bleeds left or right at any point will quickly find trees and rough. Yeah, it's certainly one of the most picturesque holes on the course. And again, very low ceiling. So this is a little bit of a high release. You can see the branches falling over the fairway. No. She goes through the through the trees decently and will have an easy time getting the par. Katka shaping a flip up as she connects with a tree about halfway, I think roughly 40 meters for her left, and about 65 meters, 60, 65 up the fairway. It does open up a little bit. You can't quite see the wider open part from the tee, but if you do manage to bite off more than half the fairway, it gets more forgiving the further up you get with more width to the space to play. See Laura now, a little bit of height there as she snags a branch and spins out. She'll have a jump putt approach from about 25, 30. Yeah, I feel like the low ceiling is really what makes this hole insanely difficult because the 82 meters doesn't seem like a very long distance, but with the low ceiling, it plays much longer than that. And Nicola, unfortunately, struggling a bit to get to the basket, but now she should be in the more open part of the fairway. 
And Katka with another awkward stance, but makes it work. She'll have a circle two look for the par. Within range, we see Nicola here, patent pending, hides a release. She fades it out a little bit early, but I think just about circles edge for her putt. Laura looking to shape a soft touch Enheiser forehand. She slides that one up nicely just outside bullseye. Yeah, it's always nice to see players going with a, with a touch forehand from that distance. And um, Andrea there trying to just get it under the basket. Leaves it a bit short. She's going to have a bit of a putt left, but... Sure, she'll handle that. Significant hyzer release on the putt there from Katka. Goes just past the basket. You see Nicola with the wide straddle around this obstacle tree. She swings it by the basket. Another confident stroke, although she's not quite finding the putts, she's not losing any confidence there. As Andrea finds that one, heart of the chains. Walks it in with confidence. That's great to see. Nicola with the comebacker, makes it. That's a good comebacker to make for the for the double bogey. Keep composed. Katka just barely drops it over the rim. Sneaks it in. It's an incredibly deceptive 82 meters. It really, you would think that a lot of players would be throwing putter or mid-range at that distance, but even some people opting to disc up to fairway just to try and get a fast break through the trees. It looks easy, but it's not. Hole 17 in the books. We move on to the last hole here of the Lagoda Disc Golf Park layout. Hole 18, par 3, 95 meters. You have this initial gap to hit with that big tree on the left to miss. Once you break out of these trees back towards the arena, you have this wide open green and a slightly elevated basket to contend with. An attackable hole that requires touch, power, precision, good control of the nose angle and hyzer angle. This asks for it all and while it's doable, really tests where your head is at at the end of the round. Yeah, certainly. Very good course design to leave the tightest gap on the course on the last hole. Extremely low ceiling as well, so you have to be just deadly accurate with the shot. Unfortunately, Andrea just barely missing the gap. Laura with the same thing. This gap is seriously very small. Um, anything that goes through the gap and flat will make it towards the basket, but everything else is also possible. And Katka with that perfect shot gets the full flight of the disc with the perfect height. Nicola going with the power sidearm there. She breaks through nicely, I think, just within circle two, snuck in there for a putt. Laura finding some of that early trouble, fortunate to break out the back and have an open look. She swings that approach right into bullseye, likely securing par to round out her round. She'll be sitting at plus six. Yeah, that's a good way to end the round. Um, getting up and down there. Looks like... Uh, looks like Andrea will have a bit of work left to do. Katka just putting it under the basket. On this hole, even though the basket's slightly <coughs> elevated, it's otherwise a very open green and... Almost no wind. Nicola, Nicola, she's not done giving it a good bid from deep. Gives it the chance. Andrea as well, looking to secure that final putt she catches just off the cage. This is Nicola to close it out now. That's a solid stroke there. Really keeping, keeping herself cool at those comebacker putts. Really good to see. And uh, finishing at... Respectable plus four. Laura also getting the par on the final hole and finishing plus six. As Andrea drops that one in for her bogey, she will be falling to seven over par. And Katka with a very solid plus one round. She's I would imagine that's probably close to the lead. Absolutely. I think she will likely be joining us for lead card tomorrow. It was yeah. a beautiful round, a beautiful course, some tricky conditions, but these players battled it out. As we take a look at the standings, only one player sneaking over Katka's plus one round, Mariana Must sitting at even 
really nicely done. Nicola in third, some names below them. It's still a tight battle and still 36 holes left of golf to go here at the Pro Forester Tournament. Yeah, especially on this course with all the woods and all the trouble, there's anything that can happen throughout the next two rounds. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your support. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And we'll catch you in round two. Elias, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Connor, And thanks for watching. <laughs>